Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on my channel and you may have seen in websites like Facebook and YouTube when we play their videos and we scroll the page while they are playing and the video is no more visible, a small window pops up in the bottom right corner and the video keeps on playing until the user manually stops the video or closes the window. In this short video, I will show you how you can do that by using the Intersection Observer API which is available in JavaScript. The video which is playing and then scrolls out of the view of the browser will keep playing in the bottom right corner until the user closes the video window altogether. This is the code example which I will create in this video. So there is a video and right now it is not playing. When I will start playing this video and when this video will be scrolled out of the view of the browser then another container element will pop up or show up in the bottom right corner of this browser and the video will start to play from where we left in the main video and while this video is playing in the corner and when we will again bring the main video in the viewport of the browser then the main video will start to play from where we left off from the corner video and if the video is paused then the main video will be paused and if the corner video is closed using this close button then also the main video will be paused so this is what I am going to create in this video and first you will learn how to know when any HTML element is visible in the browser or not and secondly you will learn how to play a video inside a fixed container in the corner of the browser. Alright so before we begin I would like to thank you all for watching this video and if you think that you like this video then please don't forget to like it and also subscribe to this channel. So this is Visual Studio Code and the first thing that I will do is to add some HTML contents. Let's also zoom a little bit. First let's just add a video element with its source pointing to a sample video which is in the WebM format. It is muted by default so that your ears won't be blown away with the loud default volume of HTML video controls. Next we need to add the div element for the bottom right corner video and for that first there is a main div container which contains two elements. The first one is the span element which is going to act like a close button and the second one is the main div which will have the cloned video from this video element. Now let's start to write the JavaScript code to make this all work and the first thing that we will do is to fetch the element references of all the HTML elements. Next I am going to add a variable for the cloned video which we can use. We will be using the intersection observer API to get to know when the main video becomes visible in the browser's viewport or when it goes out of the visible viewport of the browser. For that we need to create a new observer object out of the intersection observer constructor which is accepting the arguments for the callback function and the options object. To observe any element we need to call the observer.observe .observe function and then we need to provide the reference of the element which we want to observe. So we have already fetched the reference of this video inside this variable so I'm just going to provide its reference over here. Now we need to provide the value for the options object. So options object basically contains the information about the root element and the percentage of area which we want to observe for the target element. So the root element over here is the browser itself and the threshold is going to be 0.8 or 80%. It simply means that when this video will be visible by 80% in the browser's viewport then this callback function is going to be called. The callback function will be called whenever the element that we are observing either comes in the viewport by this percentage or goes out of the root elements viewport. So let's just have this callback function as an arrow function and there are two arguments. First one is the list of entries for all the elements which we are observing and the second one is the observer object itself. Now we need to iterate over all of these entries so let's just do that. Now inside this iteration function first we need to check if the element that we are observing is this video or not. For that we can simply check the id of the target of the entry which is going to be my video when our element is being observed. Now we need to know when this my video element is visible in the browser's viewport. So we can do that by checking the value of the property is intersecting. But first we are going to implement the coding logic for the else part when the video is not visible. So what we need to do is when the video is playing and then it subsequently goes out of the view of the browser then we need to 
show up the bottom right corner element to play the video in the corner from where we left. So if the main video is already playing when it goes out of the browser's view, then first we need to pause the main video by calling the entry.target.pause and target is going to point to the element which we are observing for this iteration. Next, we need to clear out the div corner videos inner HTML so that we can place a new cloned video inside it. After that, we can start to clone the video from the main video by calling clone node function. After the video has been cloned, we can append it as a child to the div corner video element. To play the corner video from where we left from the main video, we can set its current time as the current time of the main video. Now all we need to do is to show the bottom right corner element and then to start playing the video. So for that first let's just set the style dot display as block and then we can call the cloned videos play function to start to play it. Now we need to know if the main video is playing in the corner and for that we can add or attach a new property to the entry dot target which is our video and the name of the property is is playing in corner and we need to set it to true. So the code to show the corner video and to play it is done. Now it's time to write the code when the corner video is already playing and the main video is now brought up into the main viewport of the browser. For that first we will check if the video is already playing in the corner and the cloned video already exists. If it does then we need to synchronize the current time of the main video with the cloned video by setting the current time properties value. Now if the clone video exists then we need to remove it and hide the bottom right corner element. So if the clone video is not paused then first we will play the main video and then we will remove the clone video. For that first let's just hide the corner video container and then we can call the remove function of the clone video node and then we can set its variables value as null so that these conditions are not going to execute again when the main video becomes visible. The last thing that we need to do is to add the styling values for all of the HTML elements. For that purpose I'm just going to add a style element in the head. First I will add the style for this div video container and we just need to set the top and bottom margin so that we are able to scroll the video up and down. For the bottom right container we can have another style element and for this the important thing is to keep the position as fixed and the values for the right and bottom needs to be zero because it is in the bottom right corner. If let's say we need to put the container in the top right corner then we need to set the values for right and top as 0px. The initial value for display is none so that it will be hidden initially. And we have still not added or wired up the click event for the span close video span element. For this we can simply attach a new event listener for the click event and we can hide the corner video container when the span close video button or element is clicked and then we can also remove the clone video. Now let's just run this code and see if it is working as per our expectations. For that purpose, I will use the live server extension which is available in Visual Studio Code. So let's just open the web page and now I'm going to scroll downwards. So here is our video. Now let's just play it. The video is playing. Now let's just scroll the page upwards. So the video is now started to play in the bottom right corner and now let's again bring up the main video and it has picked up from where we left from the corner video. Now let's just pause it and now if it is paused then the corner video is not showing up. Now let's just play this again. Now the corner video has started. Pause the corner video, bring up the main video. It is paused because the corner video was paused. Let's again play it and now let's just close it using the close button and now let's just bring it up. It is again not playing because we have closed the corner video it means that the user does not want to see the video playing at all and this is how we can use intersection observer api to know when any element becomes visible in the browser's viewport or inside any other elements viewport and then do stuff with the element based on our requirements so that is pretty much it for this video guys and thank you so much for watching it i hope that you will like it and you will find it informational and useful if you do, please don't forget to place a like on it and also subscribe to the Code First channel and you will always be the first to know about any latest video updates. 
and as always you can ask me any kind of questions or if you have any kind of suggestion or feedback then feel free to use the comments area i will see you in the next video till then have a great time